really great to be here. Thanks so much for having me, and I really appreciate the opportunity to partner with you guys, as well as First Book, um, to do some great stuff with Awesome is Everywhere. Uh, and and it's, it's just nice to be home. You know, I, I live in Toronto. I'm, I'm, I was born in Oshawa. Thank you. So my parents got my parents moved to Oshawa in, in, in the 60s, actually. My dad came over from India. He was the first, this, we're talking a lot about education today, so he was the first ever high school physics teacher, at, like ever, because they never split off physics as a separate course in the Durham Board of Education. And when they wanted to introduce a new course called physics, because they had science, they didn't have physics. And when they want to introduce a new course called physics, they know when to teach physics because they never taught anyone physics, right? It's kind of a problem when you want to teach a new course. You're like, who's going to teach this now? We've never taught anyone this. So they imported uh, my dad from Amritsar, India in 1966 to be the first ever physics teacher. Um, he did his master's in nuclear physics at the University of New Delhi, which is pretty impressive, although when I ask him about it these days, he says, that's what you learn in grade 10 now. So it's like <laughs> things advance pretty quickly. Um, so me and my sister were born, born in Oshawa, grew up in Oshawa, moved to Whitby. Uh, big move, that's the city one over. And uh, we had really, really great childhoods there. The whole premise of, of the blog, which started the book, which led to the kids' book, was that I was just not doing very well, personally. So I was in a marriage that was heading in the wrong direction. I had a very close friend that was suffering from mental illness. And it was at that time that I was like, I, I need something to cheer myself up. Um, so I typed in how to start a blog, pressed on feeling lucky, and I started up 1000awesomethings.com. And it was called A Thousand Awesome Things. I thought a thousand was a tiny number, no one, you know, a thousand. Um, everything's millions and billions of everything these days. So it wasn't until a couple weeks of writing it that I realized, or someone emailed me actually, and said, it's going to take you four years if you're actually going to write an awesome thing every day. And because I was so desperate to have a good mood, and because I was so desperate to find something positive, I did it. And so I wrote about wearing warm underwear from out of the dryer. I think he said pajamas, which is maybe a bit better. Um, but underwear was kind of the kingpin. And then I, I wrote about, you know, these things like, these things like, you know, finally peeing after holding it forever, getting called up to the dinner buffet first when you're at a wedding. Um, and and uh, it started building some momentum. It started building some momentum. I'd post every single day at 12.01 a.m. So it was like the last thing I did before I went to sleep for everyone that's gone through a tough time, and I'm sure it's most people, it's the sleeping part that kind of drags you down the most. You can't sleep, the next day's even worse, the next day's even worse. And so I, uh, yeah, I, I posted at 12.01 a.m. every day from June 20th, 2008 to April 15th, 2012. Um, Book of Awesome came out in 2010. Book of Even More Awesome came out in 2011. Book of Holiday Awesome came out in 2012. Journal of Awesome came out in 2013. And here we are in 2015, and it's time for I believe to be the very last ever installment in the Awesome series, which is called Awesome is Everywhere. Basically, it's the world's first interactive, realistic book ever. So there is no other book that you can tap and it changes and it looks like a real picture. You know, it was a fun process putting it together. And by fun, I mean incredibly taxing because it was like two years of like trying to talk about like a bird in a tree and like when you blow, where should it fly and how far should it fly? And on the next page, where's that bird? And where's the crab? And where's the monkey? And all these animals are hidden in the book. You can, you'll find them on repeated readings. And the whole concept is to teach people how to meditate without telling them that they're meditating. So you've just done, by the time you've read the book, a five minute guided meditation. You've zoomed your mind into water, you've, you've gone underwater, you've zoomed into sand. And we used hundreds of pictures from, from NASA, from scientists, from we hired photographers in Cuba to take pictures of crabs. Like it was a pretty uh, fun process. We hired an animation studio in Toronto called Kerosene Visual Effects. They do a lot of work, most of their work for the Discovery Channel. And they were really behind the, the, the images. Although the funny thing is, there's a picture of me at the very back of the book, and it says, photo credit Leslie Richardson. Some people know that that's my wife's name. And they're like, Les, amazing job with the photos. Like, you did a great job. <laughs> Thinking that she did the, t the whole book of the animation. Uh, she's like, yeah, no, that, I just took the picture of Neil like, on the deck, uh, which, which, is, which is how she got her name, like right there, which is good. I really think that this concept of mindfulness is, is so important. And um, I think kids have it. You know, they have it, and the book is just meant to either remind us how to be a kid or to remind kids how to stay kids. And I hope that if kids like it when they're five, then they read it when they're 10 or 15 and sort of think, oh yeah, like, it's nice to take five minutes and just be somewhere else 
and to calmly listen to my breath and to calmly sort of see the world in a different way. And so that's what the book is all about. Yeah, great. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you.